Hi crafty folks, Amy here with Amy's Wares and today I'm going to combine a stencil and embossing. It's one of my favorite combinations. Now this is the new square lineup from A Colorful Life Designs. It's part of the August release. I also have this flower vines embossing folder and here are a couple photos of the finished card to show you the direction that we're headed. Came together really quickly but y'all know I love combining my stencils with my 3D embossing folders and this one turned out so fun. So I'm really excited. Now I'm just gonna pull a couple of really earthy sort of tones from this um, set of Catherine Pooler mini ink pads. And I'm gonna line up the stencil on this card panel here. I'm holding it down with my magnets. I have a magnetized glass mat from Glassboard Studios. This is a small business in the US and I'll link the information below. I do also have a coupon for 20% off. So if you expand and scroll down under the video, you'll find those details. But here I'm just kind of mixing a couple colors, color ranges here that probably wouldn't actually get along with one another. Um, if you overlap these too much, they're going to kind of create more of a neutral brown color, which is fine, but I didn't really want that in this case. So I just kind of butted them right up next to each other, but didn't really overlap very much. And now I'm coming in with that deeper terracotta color and kind of overlapping the lighter orange color just to kind of deepen that and give it some visual interest. Now this is a really springy or even kind of fallish color scheme maybe. Um, I didn't realize until after I created the card that it kind of looked like lattice, um, especially when you have the vines and the flowers from the 3D embossing. So. Uh, that may have been a subconscious choice pairing those together. I'm not sure, but that's certainly what it ended up looking like. But here I'm going to open up this Flower Vines uh, 3D embossing folder and take it for its maiden voyage. Um, you guys probably know the 3D embossing folders from Altenew are my favorite. I'm just going to spritz carefully the back of this card panel. That's an optional step, and I'm being mindful not to get any liquid excuse me, liquid on the front of the panel because that is a water reactive ink and I don't want to kind of messy that up. That little stencil kind of jumped into frame, wanted its little turn in the spotlight. <laughs> anyway, I didn't want to get uh, any water on the front where there's ink. So I was just really mindful just to do it like a light spritz only on the back. And now I'm going to load this up in the embossing folder, get it nice and straight. And then I'm going to run it through off screen through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 uh, embossing machine. And look at this awesome design once I get stuff out of the way here. It's so cool. I think it turned out so awesome. You can really see it even on just plain white. So that's what I love about these embossing folders. They're just such a dramatic effect. Um, you can see how much that would show and even the, the debossing side is really cool too. So you get a lot of versatility with these. Now I do decide to kind of go over um, and add just a little very slight ink blending on top of the blooms. It really doesn't do much but you can definitely see this in person. It may be a little hard to see on screen but in person you can definitely see the drama. Now I decided I didn't want a white border so I'm just using my ink pads and just swiping the color all the way around the edge of this card base and this is a 120 pound accent opaque cardstock. Um, I do decide I want to zhuzh up the corners a little bit and ink blend some of that darker color as well just to kind of give it some interest. Now I'm cleaning up as I go because I am working directly on the card base and I don't want any extra ink to get on the back um, or make a mess of this card base at all. So that's why I'm being a little extra careful. So now I'll attach that panel to the card base and then I just need to pick a sentiment to finish the card. So I have this always die cut. Um, I can't think right off the top of my head where that's from. Um, I will link it in the video description box below if I can find it. But this is my storage solution to fill up um, all these little baseball card pocket protectors with all of these die cuts. So this is a way I'm really able to save time and batch a bunch of cards and have different components ready to go. So that here for you strip is for sure all to new as well. Um, the always I'll just have to double check. And then I have these little gold flat back pearls. These are from Pink Fresh Studio and they're in all different sizes. So I'm just gonna use some liquid glue and put those down three on the top, two on the bottom. I like to work in odd numbers. I find them more visually appealing, but the gold really matches the gold of the metallic cardstock on the here for you die cut so it all kind of tied everything together the nice warm um, bright colors for this composition and like I said I feel like it looks a bit like you know a nice white lattice with some flowers vining up it or crawling up it so 
Um, kind of an unexpected uh, end result, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks.